Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going mental. And I mean that literally because today I've got 30 tips for your mental game. So, as I think all of you are aware, the mental game plays a massive role in your scoring on a golf course and getting into the right mental attitude is really key to getting the best performance on a golf course. So today I've got lots of tips for you on what you should be doing and practicing in order to make that happen. And we're going to start with tip number one, which is a very simple one. Don't talk or think about technique during your golf swing. I know there's the odd golfer out there who says, yeah, it's okay to have one swing thought, but I would honestly recommend you don't have any whatsoever. Swing thoughts cause the wrong part of your brain to get involved in the swing and unfortunately your swing is happening far too quickly for your conscious mind to be able to control separate parts of it. If you're thinking about your knee, what's, what's thinking about the rest of your body? If you're thinking about your hip turn, you're probably going to make a hip turn but the rest will go wrong. You've got to try and get belief and trust in your golf swing so that you don't have to think about any technical issues when you're swinging a golf club. Tip number one, don't think about technique. Tip number two. Tip number two leads on from tip number one, and it's the pre-shot routine. I think virtually every book I've read about the mental game ends in a pre-shot routine. Get all of your thoughts collected before you hit the ball and go through the same routine every time. Now, in the video I did a few weeks ago, the 30, 30 tips for your golf swing, we also talked about, mental, uh, about the pre-shot routine, but we talked more about what you are physically doing in it, where the ball position is, how you stand to the, to the, to the ball, and so on. But when you're thinking about the mental pre-shot routine, it's really every thought that goes through your head before you get to the golf ball. And whatever they are, they've got to be the same. The, the, the human being is a creature of habit. And if you do the same thing every time, then by the time you get to the golf ball, your brain knows you're playing golf and it will make a golf swing. But if you're thinking about something different on every swing, especially if it's technique, then that's going to kill you in the end. So try and get a stable routine for your golf swing. Pre-shot routine is tip number two. Tip number three is superstition. If you look at a lot of golfers, they seem to have kind of little ticks and things. They have this kind of feeling if they're wearing the same shirt on the same day, then uh, they're gonna play well. I think Tiger was known for wearing the red shirt on the last day of any big tournament. And superstition is all about just basically giving you another reason to believe that you're gonna be successful on the day. Now, you don't have to believe in God, but if you do believe in God and you think you've got him on your side, that's a good thing. So a lot of footballers who are crossing themselves before they go onto the, onto the pitch are doing that because they believe that is going to bring them luck. Others are wearing the same socks, others are wearing the same shirts, others have got a saying that they have before, they will only eat a particular meal. These things have bred success in the past and superstition can help you. So tip number three, is superstition. And so to tip number four, can you see it? Visualizing the shot is one of the most important parts in the mental game. If you cannot imagine the success, how in the world are you ever going to do it? Before you drive off in your car, you visualize where the car should go. You're not thinking about how much you're turning the steering wheel. And the visualization plays a massive role in life generally, and it play, plays a massive role in golf. So one of the things you've got to integrate in that pre-shot routine again is a visualization of success. When I go behind the golf ball, before I've done anything else, I get a picture in my mind of how the golf ball leaves the ground flies through the air and lands in the target. And then I will have a picture of the target while I'm hitting the ball rather than technical thoughts. If you can get a picture, you can hit the shot. If you can't see a picture, you're gonna have a real problem hitting the correct shot. Tip number four, make sure you can visualize it before you do it. Tip number five. And we're talking about affirmations. Affirmations are positive thoughts, positive inner dialogues that you can hold all the time, building yourself up. And you want to be 
really thinking about getting a list of positive affirmations that you can use all the time. Even building them into your routine before playing a round of golf, getting up and really looking forward to it, making sure you're gonna have fun on that day, making sure that you are feeling positive about yourself. And so the affirmation could be as easy as, I'm a good putter, I chip the ball really well, I feel confident when I stand over a golf ball. And you're repeating these positive things in your mind all the time. A lot of the fear and angst that we have when we play golf is built on negative affirmations, this kind of always getting down on ourselves, telling ourselves what we're doing wrong. And you wanna turn that around and get yourself talking about positive things, things you know you can do, things you've proven you've done in the past, and just get those positive thought processes going through your head time and time again, even when you're not on the golf course. Tip number six. It's not an awful lot different to tip number five, but what it's all about is, for me, building a confidence wall. The confidence wall is built on success. I think that confidence is very difficult to have, especially if it's always being contradicted by what the golf ball's doing. So you've been talking yourself up, telling yourself you can do it, and then the golf ball disappears into the bush and your confidence is in the toilet. So what you need is a confidence wall. And a confidence wall means building on positive results, building on your successes. I think we golfers have a tendency to put ourselves down. That means we hit good shots, but we never really confirm them and affirm them and congratulate ourselves on our successes. On the contrary, the bad shot, my goodness, do we get down on ourselves about it. And I have this kind of feeling every day, I want more positive bricks in my wall than negative ones. So every successful shot will actually be rewarded with a, possible, a positive affirmation of that shot. I will tell myself that was good, well done, do it again, and therefore I have one brick in the wall. Hit a good putt, a second brick in the wall. Hit a good chip, a third brick in the wall. It can be then that I'll hit a bad chip and one brick goes away. But if I can make sure that my wall gets bigger and bigger every day, then I can have a, part, a couple of bad days, I can have a couple of bad rounds, I can hit bad shots, but it's never gonna break through this wall because I've got so many positive bricks in my wall that it is impossible to actually get me down. And I think you'll see with an awful lot of top athletes, they can have a bad day, but they're still very, very positive about their ability to actually do the job the next time that they get out there and have to perform. Tip number seven, remember your good shots. You can use them again. If you're on the round and you've just hit a great shot, remember it, try and get it into your memory because the next time you stand on that hole, I want you to recall that shot. In fact, I'd like you to recall that shot over and over again, even on other holes where you can't really get a good picture. If you can remember good shots, then that's not only gonna help your confidence, but it's also going to remind your body of what you did. So get into the habit of remembering your good shots, watching the ball in the air, seeing it land next to the, the flag and congratulating, congratulating yourself on it. Remember your good shots. Tip number eight is expectations. Sometimes you've got to lower your expectations. I think especially for my viewers, the majority of you out there aren't tour professionals. You're hobby golfers, but you have expectations which are just way out of your own league. And therefore you're putting yourself under pressure the whole time. And I'm not saying that you've got to put yourself down, on the contrary, I want you to talk yourself up but you've got to be able to find a point where it's actually relative to your ability and relative to the amount of time you can actually spend playing and practicing this game. If you're out there every day on the range, then maybe you deserve to hit good shots all the time. But if you're a hobby golfer and you're playing once or twice a week, then you can't really expect your body to perform like a 24-year-old tour pro. 
So try and lower your expectations to a point where you feel comfortable. You don't have to shoot a better handicap every time you go on a golf course. Try and get to a point where you feel comfortable with your handicap and you can play it every time because it is relative to your actual ability. Measure your expectations and you'll have a lot more fun playing this game. Tip number nine is maybe one of the most difficult. You've got to stay in the here and now. I think an awful lot of times we golfers tend to race with our thoughts into the future or we're dwelling on things that happened in the past. We're thinking about what we did on the last hole, how bad the tee shot was, and we're trying to do it, make it all good in one thing, or we're worried about what could happen around the corner, positively or negatively. I've got three birdies, I'm, lit, I'm under par, I hope I can keep this going until the end. Or, on the contrary, my God, I'm going to make a total idiot of myself if I keep playing badly. There's nothing you can do about the past and there's an only way to influence the future is to stay in the here and now. So the only thing that should interest you is the next shot. The only thing that should interest you is in giving everything to the next shot and not worrying a bit about what has happened or what could happen in the future. Stay in the here and now is tip number nine. Tip number 10 is don't hit it until you're ready. I think especially the hobby golfers often feel themselves being put under pressure by people playing behind them and or even their own uh, their own partners and that means that they are actually rushing the shot um, they've made a practice swing it didn't feel very good but they don't really want to do another one because they'll hold up play now i'm all for quick play but i think quick play will come through good golf shots so there's no point in hitting the golf shot if you're not ready for it. The pre-shot routine will help you, but you've got to really be strong in your own abilities and strong in your mental, mental game to be able to say, I'm not ready, I'm going to start again. Tip number 10, don't hit it until you're ready. Yeah, that was a good shot. key is something that you can associate with what you've been doing on the driving range. If you're working on your swing on the driving range, I'm sure you'll have particular thoughts which are associated to the change that you're, you're trying to make. But I wouldn't say that is a swing key for me. What a swing key is, is basically a thought, for me, a picture, which I hold in my mind when I'm practicing. So I might be working on the knee position in the backswing or turning the shoulders. And while I'm doing this, I will have a particular picture. If you've been watching the channel, you know that my, my particular picture is a picture of Rory just after impact. I think it's such a great position he gets into there. And whenever I'm doing an exercise, irrespective of what it is, I'm thinking of this picture of Rory. And then I can use that picture of Rory in my pre-shot routine to remind my brain exactly what it is I'm wanting to do. And hopefully that will pull this new information from my brain at the right time. So when I'm doing my exercises, I have a picture of Rory. And before I hit the golf ball, I, hub, I call up this picture of Rory and my brain knows exactly what I should be doing next. I call that a swing key. Tip number 12, if you're disturbed, stop. I can actually remember standing over a golf ball in a tournament and a worm came up between my club head and the ball and I still hit the ball and the worm. And it was a terrible golf shot. I don't know why in the world I did that, but I did that. I knew it was wrong at the time and afterwards I really did uh, have to pay the price. I think there's all kind of times when we know we shouldn't hit the ball and we hit it anyway. It could be somebody rattling their clubs. You could be disturbed by your own thought processes. Suddenly your thought processes change. Uh, you worry about the right golf club, whatever it may be. 
you shouldn't hit the golf ball until you're ready, as I said in the last tip. And if you've been disturbed during your routine, then please start again. You're far more likely to hit a good shot, and in the long run, you're actually gonna play better golf and you're gonna be quicker around the golf course than if you hit a bad shot and you then have to spend three minutes looking for it. Tip 13 is bad luck. It's what they call swishing in NLP and actually means basically replacing one hole with another hole. So a lot of times you'll get on a golf course and there'll be a particular hole that you don't like or that might just simply be difficult for you to visualize what you want to do on that hole. In order to, to change that, all you have to do is remember playing another hole. If you can remember a hole where you always hit a good drive or a hole where you've played particularly well, why not imagine you're on that hole rather than being on this hole that you hate where the fairway is narrow or the water hazard comes into the actual, into your, your field of view and causes you problems to actually get a positive thought process going. It's not as difficult as it feels and it's not a bad idea to have the idea of, of almost like a curtain going up and behind this curtain is the hole that you actually want to play. So you're imagining rather than bunkers on the left, you're seeing bunkers on the right on the hole that you enjoy. Tip number 13 is what they call swishing. You swish away the bad hole and replace it with a good hole. Tip number 14 is a bit of a funny one, but it works. Sometimes when you're out on the golf course, you just can't get these bad thoughts out of your head. Something has happened and it's just sent you off on one and you're getting into the wrong frame of mind and you're hitting bad golf shots. You need a kind of a reset button. And my reset button is Jennifer Aniston. Now, for a long time, I thought Jennifer Aniston was God's gift and she probably still is. But the fact is that thinking about Jennifer was something which actually stopped me thinking about all the other rubbish. If there's anything you have in your life that you like more than anything else in the world, now obviously that's not the case anymore, I'm very happily married guy, uh, but if, you're, if there is, you want to try and call up that thing, that person. It could be your new Apple computer, it could be that new Lamborghini you've got sat in the driveway, but it's something which is based on an emotional feeling of happiness and success. And if you can call up that picture when you're having a bad time on the golf course, it will help you to almost reset your brain and you can start again. Jennifer Aniskin can save your golf game. Tip number 15 is similar to tip number 14, but it's golf related. I can remember going to a place called Ganton in North Yorkshire and watching Greg Norman play when I was just a boy and he hit the ball miles. I followed him around the entire round and then spent an hour on the driving range watching him. And when I went back to the course the following day, I played the best round of my life. Why? Because I thought I was Greg Norman. Although it sounds ridiculous, sometimes just visualizing a good golfer can help you play better golf. And one of the simplest things is just watching their posture. You'll never see Tiger Woods wandering around a golf course like this. His shoulders are back, his head is up, and he's work, walking with confidence. Adopt the posture of a good player and you'll be amazed how that helps you play better golf. If there's a player out there that you worship, adore, and respect, then get a picture of them, get into their bodies, and start playing like them on the golf course. Tip number 16, buzzing along. Now we're gonna talk about an anchor. And getting an anchor is all about kind of building a positive feeling on an anchor. Again, if we talk about the NLP guys, they like to get you pulling on your ear or pressing your nose or doing something unusual. Whilst you're thinking of 
positive things. So if you go back into your memory and think of times when you have excelled, maybe you gave a great speech, maybe you played a great round, maybe you chipped in or got a hole in one, play that film back, remember that thing, and while you're doing it, touch your anchor. Remind yourself of this. You're gonna use this anchor at times when it's going not so good. So when you're under pressure, when you're not feeling confident, you can remind yourself of all those great things you've done in life. Really, your brain is not always keyed into where you actually are and getting the wrong thought processes will actually easily lead you to lose confidence when there's no reason to but you can turn this all around with a positive anchor. Go back into your past, think of all the things that have happened positively for you, and try and anchor them on anything or something simple that you can actually call up whenever you need it. <sighs> Tip 17 is get some perspective. This is not life and death. On the contrary, this is your hobby. This is your pastime. You're supposed to be having a good time out here. Get some perspective about it. When we're playing golf, yeah, sure, it's important, but the sun's gonna go up tomorrow, whether you had a good round or a bad round. And in, in fact, tomorrow's another opportunity to play well. I think Bob Rotella says that golf's not a game of perfect, and it certainly isn't. So we're all going to hit bad shots, we're all going to have bad rounds, and you've just got to get that into perspective. It's not life and death, get over it, and tomorrow's another day. Tip number 18. Tip number 18 is all about filling the holes between the shots. You're going to be out on a golf course for a long time, and unfortunately your brain isn't capable of concentrating for that amount of time. So you really only want to be concentrating over the shots. So between the shots, you've got to be doing something else. Now maybe you're interested in bird life or, or in the trees and the fauna around you, and you could be looking at that. What I tend to do is take thought processes which are already, um, already thought about before I get on the round. So if I'm reading a good book, I'll actually go through that book again. If I've watched a good film, I'll think about the plot and the twists or even a television series that I'm watching. How could it actually work out? It's got to be something that you're interested in, but you certainly don't want to be thinking about golf all the time on a golf course. Maybe you've got someone you're playing with who's quite interesting and you can have a chat with them. But as as often happens in professional golf, they don't want to talk to you, then you're going to have to actually find something to um, keep your brain ticking over but not to get yourself mentally tired during the round because you're concentrating so hard on golf and what's just happened and what's going to happen and all those ridiculous things. Try and find something else to think about between the shots. Tip number 19 is about understanding that you can par every hole on the course. Now I know that's probably never going to happen but it's not impossible. A lot of us are putting ourselves down before we even get out there, but if you're a typical club golfer, then you're playing the same holes on the same golf course every day. But you've got into your head that some of them are hard and some of them are easy, and probably you're gonna play over your handicap. You've gotta think about all the times you've actually parred these holes, and if you've been playing the course for long enough, at some day or at some time or another, you've had a par on every one of these holes. You've just never done it in every hole. But I want you to go out the next time and remember that you have parred that hole. Think about how you did it and get into the mental state that you're going to do it again. It doesn't matter what happened on the last hole, it doesn't matter what happened on the next hole, it means what's gonna happen on this hole. And if you go into that hole with the positive state of mind that you're gonna par the hole, you've got more of a chance than if you go there hoping you're gonna par the hole. And when I'm talking about the zone, I'm talking really about a kind of a level of excitement that you're gonna have in your body when you're playing golf. I know a lot of people will talk about the zone 
as basically a point where everything is just simply working, where they're just in that kind of strange place where they can't make a mistake. I'm talking more about kind of a, le a level of excitement. If you get under motivated and a bit down on yourself and a bit relaxed and lethargic, then you're not going to play as good golf as if you're actually in that kind of zone, that, that point of excitement where you are actually going to bring your best swing to the table. On the other hand, if you're getting too excited about the whole situation, that's probably also going to be negative for you. So the trick is to talk yourself up and down so that you stay in this kind of level of excitement. Now, some people should be in a lower level of excitement than others. You know who you are. If you're somebody who plays their best golf when they're not really expecting to because they hit the ball terrible on the driving range, then you're probably better off with a kind of a lower level of excitement. But if you're a Gary Player-esque kind of person who imagines himself up on the, dry, on the leaderboard and can't really get excited about the game without a scorecard in the hand, then you're going to be working at a higher level. So you want to be kind of building yourself up to that level or, building yourself, or pulling yourself down to the level where you feel comfortable. Find a level that you like and stay in that level when you're playing golf and you'll play a lot better. Tip number 21 is love it or leave it. Sometimes there's golf clubs that we just don't like. We know we ought to use them because they would be perfect for this shot, but we've never really hit them correctly, so we should really leave them at home. Love it or leave it is quite simple. If you don't trust that golf club, leave it at home. Only take the golf clubs on the round that you trust, and if that means that you're out on the round with three golf clubs in your bag, then so be it. Try and build a trust and a relationship with the ones that you don't get on with on the driving range, but don't use them on the golf course if you don't feel confident with them. Simple tip, love them or leave them. Tip 22 is breathe. Now, I know that's probably something that you ought to be doing anyway, but you'd be surprised how you change your breathing during a round of golf. And usually, obviously, this is dependent on the situation you find yourself in. Um, I've seen uh, friends and colleagues who get so uptight, you can actually see them almost holding their breath before they play the shot. Others will actually start to hyperventilate because of the situation that they find them in. So it's very much worthwhile actually watching your way that you're breathing now and again, especially if you feel yourself coming under pressure. And in a lot of cases, just concentrating on your breathing, relaxing, taking deep breaths in through your mouth, letting them out through your nose or the other way around, it doesn't really matter. But the trick is just basically being aware of how your situation affects the way that you breathe and making sure that you're just keeping your breathing relaxed and regular and not getting too excited or on the other hand holding your breath at times when you really shouldn't be. Think of your brain as a library. Whenever you learn something new for your golf swing, whether it be in the full swing, the putting, the chipping or anything else, don't believe that you have lost your ability to make the old swing. Unfortunately, you haven't. But you've got to think of the new swing as a separate entity. The, re the reason that you are always falling into bad habits is because the bad habits haven't disappeared. You haven't overwritten your old swing with a new swing. You've simply made a new swing like a new book in the library. But unfortunately, habit will tend to, to lead you to the old book in the library rather than the new book. So the big trick is to keep this new book fresh. I said in one of the earlier tips you could use a swing key, a picture to help you remember which book it is in the library that you're wanting to take out today. And by getting the swing key associated with this understanding and belief that you haven't lost your old swing, it's just been put back at the back of the library. Your new swing is at the front of the library and easy to get to. That will help you make a mental switch from old to new. 
get the newest book out of the library. Tip 24 is about commitment. No, I'm not talking about staying with wife, although that's probably a good one as well. I'm talking about committing to every shot, committing to every club choice. A lot of times we'll stand there and we'll second guess ourselves. Is it a six iron? Is it a seven iron? Am I going to get there? Will I get over the, over, the, over the water hazard? If you aren't committed to the shot, it's not going to work. You might have the wrong golf club in your hand, but if you don't commit to it, it's definitely the wrong golf club. So whether it's committing to a difficult shot, committing to a, an important putt, Whatever you can do, if you can say you did that 100%, whether it works or it doesn't, you can't do any more. Commit to every shot you hit. Golf is going to throw you an awful lot of curveballs. And tip number 25 is don't see it as a problem, see it as a challenge. If you can turn every difficult shot on a golf course into a challenge, something you look forward to, in fact, something you actually enjoy, then you're going to play a lot better than if you start getting down and thinking, oh God, how can this happen to me? That's not fair. One of the things you've got to learn with this game is, is lots, but it's not fair. You're going to get bad bounces, you're going to get bad lies, and other people are going to hit bad shots and get good results. And it's not fair. But if you play enough golf, everything's going to happen to you, positive and negative. So try and see every shot as a challenge and not as a problem. Enjoy the game and embrace the challenge. Almost got it. Tip 26. Have fun. This is your free time, people. You should be out there having a good time. And hitting a golf ball can be tremendous fun. Holding a putt can be tremendous fun. I love this game and I still have great fun playing it. Are you having fun out there? If you're not, <laughs> do something else. But I think a lot of cases, you're just putting yourself under too much pressure. There's lots of tips in this, in this video which will help you to have more fun playing golf. Please make sure you're having fun. Tip 27 is patience. Oh, it's so difficult to be patient. A lot of times you're out there and you're grinding away and whatever you do, the putts aren't falling the balls are rolling off the fairway, it's just not going the way you want it. You've got to be patient. You can't force it in this game. The more you need it, the more you want it, the worse it will be. What you've got to do is be patient. It will come. Relax, keep in your routine, stay in the here and now, and you'll be surprised. Suddenly the ball will start dropping. Suddenly the drive will sit and suddenly your score will go down. But it will only happen if you stay there. 28. Try and create pressure when you're practicing. That means basically not just hitting balls. Practice golf and that means you need a target. You want to actually try and hit that target and every time you hit that target, you want to try and get the next ball even closer. There's all kinds of ways of putting yourself under pressure. Create statistics and see how many putts did you hold last week? Can you hold more this week? Look how far away you're getting the ball from the target and try and get it closer. Put yourself under pressure. Make your, your practice demanding and you'll find that your play gets easier. If you make your play to your, your practice too easy, then your play will become more demanding. So number 29, the penultimate tip of the day, and it's a quite a nice one. It's all about happiness. Strangely enough, if you think about it, what you're doing out here is trying to make yourself happy. I know it sounds like a contradiction, but it's true. 
The reason you want to hit that good shot, the reason you want to play that birdie, is you're pretty sure that's gonna make you happy. But I can give you a tip. If you're not happy before you play the shot, you're not gonna be happy after the shot either. Happiness is all subjective, <laughs> yeah? What, what is one person's happiness is another person's trouble. And what you've got to try and understand is that this game is going to help you to enjoy your life, but it's not gonna make you happy if you're not happy to start off with. You're very lucky to be on a golf course, and if your biggest problem is where the golf ball goes, then you haven't really got a problem. So my 29th tip is try and be happy before you hit the shot, and then there's a very good chance that you're still going to be happy after you hit the shot, irrespective of how it ends up. Tip number 30. It's not really visualization, but then it is as well. One of the things I used to do an awful lot as a child is actually play the golf course mentally before I actually went to play the tournament. So having played a practice round, I knew what every hole in the golf was, and I would actually imagine myself out there playing golf before I even got out there. I would test different strategies in my brain before I actually went out to play so that when I actually got there, I felt at home, even if it wasn't a golf course that I played every day. Getting your, your brain to actually do this, getting your imagination to see you actually on the golf course, making the shots that you are wanting to do, uh, maybe the following day, maybe in a couple of weeks time, will actually help you to be mentally prepared for the job that you're going to undertake when you actually get out there. Final tip is try and play the golf course that you're gonna play in the next two in your mind's eye before you actually get out there and play it for real. That was the last video for me in 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed for the channel, please do so. Hit the little bell and you'll get a notification when I post my first video in 2020. It's been great talking to you. I hope I've helped you this year. Um, if you need a little bit of nighttime reading, I'll leave my philosophy as ever up here in the new, in the left-hand corner. There will be a new philosophy, however, coming in 2020. Um, a revamp of what you've probably already seen and read if you've downloaded it, but well worth having a look at for 99 cents. I don't think I'm ripping you off there. I wish you all a very happy Christmas, a very happy new year. Most importantly, come back to the new year healthy, if not wealthy, and we'll see you all then. Bye-bye.